the second day of competition here. 19 copies of Is It Phoenix, that's going to be the weapon of choice for young Austin College. Nine copies of Dredge, significant dropout there, but still the second most represented deck. Abe Corrigan's representing that one. Just two really powerful faithful suiting strategies here. Austin College won the die roll. Basic Island, Serum Visions being fired off on turn one, trying to sculpt that hand. Turn two, Thing in the Ice is kind of what you're looking for in this matchup. Yeah, Thing in the Ice is uh, definitely a, a huge card to have because it uh, basically resets all those free creatures that the Dredge deck's able to acquire through the Graveyard Strat. Um, on top of that, though, just a couple of Phoenixes early on could be enough to, to sway uh, the matchup as long as you're able to knock off those Narc Amoebas from being able to block. The Flying important because it gets over those Prize Amalgams, which can recur over and over, and they survive uh, effectively the, uh, the removal spells like Conflagrate or Lightning Axe. For Corrigan, he'll start on Capperline Gorge and Faithless Looting. Thinking about what to discard, you see a life from the loam towards the front of the hand. There's got to be some pause there, though. Players are main decking Surgical Extraction these days. Not only are they main decking Surgical Extraction, but he also has a couple of cards that he definitely wants in the graveyard already in his hand. Uh, looks like two copies of Prize Amalgam and a Blood Gas, and there's a chance that he should just be discarding um, some combination of those cards, playing a land and starting to apply pressure next turn. But Corrigan also knows that in this matchup, you need to be able to race things in the ice and just getting a couple of creatures on the battlefield, not going to do it. He needs to start digging for Conflagrate right now. Yeah, so his choice was two life from the loams. So we'll go back to Austin Collins. He'll crack a Scalding Tarn for his Steam Vents, goes to 17. He has that turn two thing in the ice. That can be a huge deal. Yeah, not only is, does it represent a large chunk of damage, it also represents a nice defensive plan against uh, a swarm of creatures. And Dredge, you know, they uh, they play a pretty good game one. Most uh, decks in the format, I would say, are disadvantaged against Dredge in game one. Now, I think that Is It Phoenix actually boasts a positive game one uh, matchup against Dredge simply because Thing in the Ice is so powerful against them and it's hard to kill. And on top of that, they have main deck Surgical Extraction, which can sometimes uh, make the, dr the Dredge draws uh, anemic and uh, kind of steal games that way. Corgan will dredge life from the loan for turn and made it that far. He finds a conflagrate and another faithless looting. Pretty significant hits there. Yeah, I mean, more graveyard cards, the better. Uh, looks like Corgan here, he hit that conflagrate. That's what he was going for. He's just going to discard the Bloodgast, the two prize amalgams, and, and the life from the loam holding on to two cards here, taking off that uh, thing in the ice. Yeah, huge swing because it's just a stocked graveyard now and the thing's off the table. We'll see what Collins can do to recover. He has a second thing in the ice. That's very good for him. Oh, absolutely. And with the conflagrate gone and Corgan with just two raw cards in hand to work with, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Corgan's going to be able to uh, capitalize on uh, or get rid of this thing in the ice before Austin's able to capitalize on it. Collins will Seer Visions, played Basic Island as the land for turn, thing in the ice down to three counters. Thinking a bit about his scries, he does have a couple more cantrips in hand. Yeah, he's going to be able to transform that next turn pretty easily, so even if Corrigan has the land for the blood gas, which he does, uh, he's going to need some way to get this thing in the ice off the battlefield. Another Conflagrate is not even going to quite do it because he's only got three cards in hand, and he can't do the life from the loam, play the land for turn, and still cast uh, flashback Conflagrate. So just a little short here, that thing in the ice could be problematic. Corrigan will dredge life from the loam again. Finds a creeping chill this time. He'll be going to 23 to Collins on 14. But very light on resources here. Three card hand, stomping ground, Narc Amoeba, and that life from the loam. Yeah, and even though he does have a life from the loam uh, to pair with the Faithless Looting, so he could start a dredge chain this turn. With only a dredge three, there's a chance he just misses on a second dredger, uh, just draws a card, discards, and doesn't really progress all that much in the face of that thing in the ice. But with that said, I mean, there's not a whole lot else for him to do. He can cast life from the loam, get back two lands. Uh, but I think Faithless Looting is probably his best bet right now. Corrigan shocks to 21 for that uh, stomping ground. Very suggestive that he's going to flashback a Faithless Looting. Thinking about a Blood Gas trigger right now. Now, unlike a lot of those types of cards, Blood Gas is actually a May. And uh, Corrigan knows that if he brings a Blood Gas, the Prize Amalgam is not a May. The Prize Amalgams have to come back. And then there's a chance that the thing in the ice, a very good chance the thing in the ice transforms next turn and bounces all of them back to his hand. And what he could do is just let Collins transform, ha attack for seven, and then potentially just get the Blood Gas back on a different turn. And, uh, y you know, you want those cards to be in the graveyard. That's where they, you need them to be at. And you see he, just, he declines the blood gas there. He'll flashback Faithless Suiting, dredges life from the loam, finds another Ooh. blood gas, but no second dredger. So now he does get to discard two life from the loam. Now he did find a cathartic reunion, and that could be pretty explosive next turn. Let's see how Austin responds. So Collins 
Go back into his turn. I believe at least three blue cantrips in the hand. He'll start with the sleight of hand here. Thing on the ice to two counters. Now, sleight of hand versus opt is uh, something that comes up quite often in this deck. Looks like Collins uh, prefers the immediate look as opposed to being able to play at instant speed. Uh, I don't blame him. It's one that I've been struggling with myself. Yeah, generally it's mostly heavy Snapcaster Mage decks that are trying to play on your opponent's turn that lead more towards Opt. Yeah, and uh, while Collins does have two copies of Snapcaster Mage, you know, a Snapcaster Sleight of Hand is still almost as good, if not better, than a, uh, a Snap Sleight of Hand. Mm -hmm. And now here, Alston, you know, he's thinking, well, the value of this thing in the ice in this matchup relies a lot on how, whether or not you're able to return a bunch of creatures to your opponent's hand. And if Corgan has just basically refused to uh, to bring his creatures back, you know, it's possible that Austin should just wait. Here's a little bit more incentive to go now, though, as he Thought Scours over an Arclight Phoenix thing in the ice to one counter. He'll fire off another Thought Scour that'll transform the thing into an Awoken Horror. Ooh, man. He has milled over two surgical extractions. Yeah, and if he finds a Snapcaster Mage, that could be good, but... Uh, those are definitely the cards you want to draw in the matchup, not the ones you want to mill over with your Thought Scour. So that one Arclight Phoenix, that'll bounce back. Look at the back. face. <laughs> look at the face. <laughs> doesn't, look, doesn't look too thrilled about that. Yeah, well, he knows, he knows the shields are down. Both players know the shields are down. That's rare. Rare that someone plays three copies of Surgical in, uh, in Is It Phoenix's main deck. Tark Patel doing that this weekend, of course, but it is few and far between. He did get to attack for 10. That's not for nothing. Corrigan's at 11 here as you see him dredge life from the loam. Milled over a Stinkweed Imp and the third prized amalgam. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to be returning a lot of power to the battlefield here. And uh, while he doesn't have another Conflagrate yet to, to translate those extra lands into uh, burst damage, he is going to produce a significant amount of power. But he doesn't have that much defense. That Mana Confluence that he did draw, though, can let him cast the, uh, the Narc Amoeba to present a Chump Blocker. And right now, though, it looks like he doesn't have a Chump Blocker. So I'm curious... Uh, what his plan is here going down to 10 life. Yeah, he fetches off Wooded Foothills there, as you mentioned, going to 10. He had cast life from the loan to pick up some lands. Now he'll use that Wooded Foothills to bring back his two blood casts and later get those prized amalgams. Ooh, Cathartic Reunion, that's a good reason. Now, he's going to start churning through his deck here, and if he hits a couple of Creeping Chills, he's going to put uh, Collins all the way down to 8, and he's going to put himself at 16, which is pretty close to out of range of getting burnt. Now, it is a multiple of, of three, though, com uh, with, along with that 10 damage. And if he hits a Narc Amoeba, that also gives him a chance to uh, uh, find a Chump Blocker for the, the thing in the ice. We found his fourth Amalgam off that first dredge of the Stinkweed Imp. No uh, Creeping Chills just yet. Here is a Narc Amoeba off of dredging Life from the Loam, though. And one last look with three with Life from the Loam, just more dredgers. So no Creeping Chills, but one Narc Amoeba. Yeah, one Narc Amoeba and the fourth prize Amalgam. So if uh, Collins can't win on his next turn, there's a chance that uh, he actually just needs to, to hold back on defense a little bit. Colin shows a lightning bolt, though. That takes care of Narc Amoeba. That's a seven-point lightning bolt because of the <laughs> Awoken Horror. And Austin Collins is going to be up a game here. Yeah, that was a, a pretty impressive showing from both sides as far as what their decks can do. Um, both players making key decisions that could have ultimately ended in a significantly different way had Abe Corgan's dredges just gone a little bit differently. Finds a creeping chill here, gains a little bit of life. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, just hits uh, a second Narc Amoeba, and then that Lightning Bolt is no longer lethal. Player is going to look to their sideboards here as Abe Corgan is now down a game for his dredge deck. He has four Nature's Claims, three Ancient Grudge, three Lightning Axe, two Surgical Extraction, an Assassin's Trophy, a Collective Brutality, and a Dark Blast. Couple nice things to like here. Yeah, so the graveyard uh, hate from Is the Phoenix is almost always just surgical extraction, so no need for something like Nature's Claim or Ancient Grudge. Uh, Lightning Axe is a great way to interact with Thing in the Ice, which is one of the more problematic cards from Is the Phoenix, so I like the Lightning Axes. The two surgical extraction are definitely a nod to this matchup, but they also come in, in other matchups, but here they're just a, a removal spell for Arclight Phoenix. Uh, the Assassin Trophy, again, another answer to Thing in the Ice, so it might be worthwhile. I don't think you want to bring in Collective Brutality or Dark Blast, though. Austin Collins and his sideboard here. We have two Blood Moons, two Spell Pierce, two Dispel, two Abraid, a Beacon Bolt, a Chandra Torch of Defiance, an Anger of the Gods, a Surgical Extraction, a Ravenous Trap, one Dragon's Claw, and a Shatterstorm. Yeah, so uh, on this side of things, I'm not a fan of Blood Moon, but apparently Dylan Donigan, who is very smart, 
uh, has come up with a sideboard plan that he likes involving Blood Moon. So I'm going to say, you know, maybe it's good. I'm not going to try to find fault in it because for the most part, uh, you know, Blood Moon is just a powerful card that can sometimes lock your opponent out. And when one of their primary plans is Life from the Lone plus Conflagrate, there's a chance that locking that out is just good enough on its own to be worthwhile. Aside from that, though, I do kind of like Spell Pierce to slow your opponent down. If you're able to snag a Cathartic Reunion on two, it's insane. Um, outside of that, Anger of the Gods, Surgical Attraction number three, those definitely come in. Ravenous Trap, obviously, for this matchup, very, very strong. Uh, but I would be kind of looking to bring those in and side out things like Lightning Axe and Lightning Bolt and Gut Shot. Those removal spells just aren't very good in the matchup since they primarily target Narc Amoeba, which is primarily there just to chop block. So for those of you watching us live here on our Twitch channel, we'd really appreciate you if you would subscribe. And for our current subscribers, many thanks to you for help making everything that we do here possible. Hell yeah. And uh, for some perks for subscribing, you get to decide the quarterfinals, as it were. We will have quarterfinal voting coming in once we have our top eight settled. We'll put that up. You get to choose the match you want to watch. Uh, we, we do have a fair amount of diversity in the top eight here, oh, even yeah. though we, we do see a lot of Phoenix and Dredge. There's some other stuff going on here, so it, it'll be a cool decision to make there. Custom emoticons and badges. We, we rolled out some new emoticons on the page recently. Oh, yeah. Uh, not only is there a Roll Todd emote, which is me, uh, there's also one for Ross Merriam, Brad Nelson, uh, as well as just a slew of the, the old player tokens got turned into emotes. I know the Cedric Phillips Goblin token got turned into an emote. And so you can basically put words in our mouth. Just uh, use use our uh, emojis uh, with a little colon, and then you can make me say stupid stuff like Roll Todd. Yeah. Or, you know, Dredge is great. Yeah, I would, like Roll Todd <laughs> seems like one that you're going to be saying anyway. Yeah. So not a lot of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's four ninety nine a month. Uh, we would love it if you would subscribe to our page. Twitch.tv slash SCG Tour for those of you that might be watching on YouTube. All right. Both players shuffling up here for game two. Sideboards in the deck. A little bit more interaction is expected here. Both players going down to six cards, perhaps looking for a little bit of that graveyard interaction uh, from Colin's side and maybe looking for just a playable hand from the Dredge side. <laughs> Dredge deck known to mulligan a lot and that mulligans well. And in a manner of speaking, it does kind of force your opponents to mulligan a bit because it takes very specific things to interact with Dredge in a meaningful way. Right. Now Corrigan here, uh, going to be starting off this game. Um, curious what's in his hand. Definitely want something like Cathartic Reunion or Faithless Looting on the first turn just to, to get the party started. But has to be cognizant of uh, things like faith, uh, sorry, uh, Surgical, surgical extraction. extraction. Yeah, especially because it's free. It costs zero. He's got something going on, though. He'll crack a scolding tarn to 19, finds a mountain. Is it a looting or a shriek horn? He has a looting at the front of the hand. He'll fire that off. All right. Finds a lightning axe and a creeping chill. Probably can safely pitch the creeping chill, but he's got a, a couple of lands he wants to get rid of, too. Uh, but with the, the Golgari thug that he wants to get in the graveyard for dredging purposes, it's an easy one. Easy one to pitch. Yep. Golgari thug, creeping chill are the discards. We'll go to Austin Collins' first turn. Also, we'll crack a scalding tarn. See if that's 19 or 17. You see Blood Moon has come in. That was the bottom card of the deck there. He finds Basic Island. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Now, one of the coolest things about cards like Surgical Extraction. Uh, same reason why Tormod's Crypt used to be the go-to in uh, in Legacy as the anti-graveyard card, because you could play something like a Brainstorm or Ponder, and you could find it, and then cast it for zero mana. And here in these Cantrip-heavy decks featuring Serum Vision, Sleight of Hand, you don't necessarily need the anti-graveyard card in your opener against Dredge. You can sometimes find it off of one of those Cantrip effects and uh, utilize it later on. See, Steering Visions was the spell for Collins in turn one. Scryed one top, one bottom. Corrigan dredged the Golgari Thug. Milled over two Lightning Axes, so won't have access to those ones this game, but he does have one in his hand. He'll sacrifice Wooded Foothills and find a stomping ground down to 16. Man, I would love it if Collins just goes Thing in the Ice, followed by Surgical Attraction on Lightning Axe to take care of the answers. <laughs> That'd, That'd be awesome. That'd be so brutal. 
Uh, speaking of Brutal, though, Corrigan, there's Cathartic Reunion. Golgari Thug being dredged. Two Prize of Malcolms off the first hit. Life from the oh, Loam finds a no. Dark Amoeba. There's your combo, and Life from the Loam, one, two, three, Mountain, Stinkweed Imp, Air Mesa. That one less exciting, but still some pretty good dredges. All right, well, Surgical Extraction here from Austin Calls is going to strip Abe Corrigan of all the Narc Amoebas. The choice is Narc Amoeba, not Prize of Malcolm. Uh, understanding, of course, that they're without a Blood Gas in the graveyard already, it's going to be relatively difficult to bring those Prize of Malcolms back. The only real way you can do it is with the Narc Amoeba or the Blood Gas. And that Surgical Attraction taking away basically half the ways to do it means those Prize of Malcolms are effectively neutered. Yeah, Collins falls to 17 for that Surgical. But you're right, Corrigan's turn went from pretty scary to pretty mundane. Yeah, and a single Surgical Attraction here. Uh, obviously, the game is not decided by any means, but definitely a step in the right direction for Collins as he's already up a game and he's taken away half of the creatures that allow Dredge to function. And now he knows about that lightning axe in Corrigan's hand as well. So he doesn't have to do anything like just casting the ice into that on turn two. Right. And he can just start digging for things like Arclight Phoenix, which are insulated from traditional spot removal like lightning axe. Fun thing about surgical extraction, the player who owns the deck is supposed to shuffle it first. That's By true. fun, I mean kind of annoying bookkeeping. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. As long as the deck is sufficiently randomized, I could care less. Yeah, exactly. And there's a Snapcaster Mage drawn off the top for Collins. And when Ooh. you pair that with Surgical Extraction, uh, Abe Corrigan is going to be hard-pressed to get out of this. Now i just uh, got to figure out what card Austin Collins wants to hit with that Surgical Extraction. He can hit Tinkwin it right now, which could potentially... Uh, make the next turn from Abe Corrigan uh, irrelevant. He doesn't have a land in hand yet uh, to flash back that Faithless Looting. His hand is just a bunch of dredgers. Now, he could just wait on the Blood Gas, which I think is a, a pretty smart move. Well, for now, he's just going to pass as we see Corrigan dredges that Stinkweed Imp. Creeping Chill and Blood Gas. Surgical Extraction coming in for Corrigan as well. Those are for Arclight Phoenixes, but that one's going to hit the graveyard. And see if Collins wants any action on this. Looks like that Creeping Chill is going to go off, though. And Collins does know the cards in Corrigan's hand until this life from the loam. There's no land for that blood gas. Yeah, uh, and he, he needs to do that now in response to the life from the loam, though, just because uh, if, if Corrigan chooses to play the fetch land, he can uh, invalidate that surgical extraction. But uh, obviously, Collins is a heads-up player, stripping those blood gas out. Now, no real creatures left to threaten Austin Collins for the rest of the, the game. Now, the, the blood gas are gone, the narc amoebas are gone, and the prize amalgams are effectively dead in the graveyard. It's going to be up to Abe Corgan to just hard cast stuff like Stigweed Imp or uh, uh, Golgari Thug to potentially attack, uh, deal some damage to Collins. But, you know, he still has the burn plan, and that's what, something that the Blood Moon is supposed to solve. Once he takes away the creatures, a Blood Moon takes uh, Corgan off of green mana, and then Conflagrate Life from Loma is no longer nearly as threatening. So Collins went to 14 off of the Creeping Chill, Corrigan to 19. Surgical Extraction put Collins down to 12, but most of the threats he has to worry about are gone. Now he just needs to work on his closing speed. Yeah, and with Corrigan at 19 from a couple of Creeping Chills, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be too hard, but th those life points do matter. Collins will start his turn here with a Manamorphose. Casts a sleight of hand, still has a red mana floating. And still hasn't played a land yet either. But that Faithless Looting is going to allow him to discard uh, at least one Arclight Phoenix from hand that I saw. And he still has a land drop to play. So there's one Arclight Phoenix. No second copy in the hand. There's a Lightning Bolt, which not always great at this stage in the game in the matchup, but there are worse potential cards. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's... The land might actually be worse. A Blood Moon might actually be worse just because you're trying to kill Abe before he finds Conflagrate. Colin's going to give this one some pause. These are always interesting decisions. The other card to discard. You know, you know the Phoenix is going. If you're not flooded or anything like that, it, it is something that you can go back and forth on. You see Thing in the Ice actually discarded. Yeah, that's a really interesting discard, uh, not only because Thing in the Ice is one of the better cards in the matchup, but knowing that Corgan has Lightning Axe in the hand, um, you know, he's basically saying, hey, I no longer want to rely on this plan. If you want to use Lightning Axe, you're going to have to take care of one of these creatures that I don't really care that much about. And he gets to save uh, potentially an instant sorcery from his hand uh, instead of having that kind of dead Thing in the Ice because of the... Uh, uh, 
the Lightning Axe. So it was an attack for five, Corrigan to 14. He'll dredge life from the loam. He finds a Conflagrate, and he still has a pretty stocked hand. Yeah, that Conflagrate is fairly dangerous here. Uh, he can cast life from the loam, get some lands back, and play one for turn and use a Conflagrate for quite a bit. He can't quite get to 12. Uh, and he only has two copies of Conflagrate in the list, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of people are trimming that from three down to two from previous versions to get an extra dredger like Dark Blast or Dagmore Salvage into the mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is two Conflagrate. We saw for a little bit players had a third copy on the sideboard. Corrigan not doing that. It's just going to be two. All right, gets back three lands from the loam. Hasn't played a land yet. Can play Mountain and Conflagrate. He can clean up the creatures if he so chooses. Uh, or he can just go straight for the dome and hope that he finds another Conflagrate in the very near future. We'll see exactly where he goes. It's a bit curious that Collins is leaving a mana behind that can sometimes signal that he's holding on to a Spell Pierce, which is a reasonable card to expect him to board in. Yep. Not only that, but I mean, Collins is, he knows the removal cell is there. And if uh, Corrigan had chosen to use the axe last turn, he doesn't want to like cast sleight of hand when he can save that to potentially chain off on the following turn. And you know, he, he doesn't have a whole lot of juice going on right now. He discarded the thing in the ice, right? So like, he's not flooded, mm -hmm. but he might not have like a chain of draw spells that he wants to do. Well, looks like Corrigan's discarding a sizable amount of cards, I believe seven. All right, well, looks like he, uh, went for one at the Snapcaster Mage and the rest at Collins' Dome. That puts him at a precariously low life total, but he's only got one Conflagrate left in the deck, and if Corrigan's able to dredge some life from the loam, uh, something like that, you know, it's possible that he's able to steal this game even though Surgical Extraction completely crippled a lot of his development. And that puts Collins to six, which uh, Corrigan's motivation seems to be that's two creeping chills. Right. We'll go back to Collins. He thought score at Encept. He milled over one of his Blood Moons there, back on his turn. He'll be casting a Sleight of Hand. Yeah, I have to imagine he's able to play a three instant Sorceries. The question now becomes, can he find another uh, Arclight Phoenix? But instead just finds a Thing in the Ice. So he's going to have basically one turn to sweat. Yeah, and hope the Corrigan misses. Serum Visions as well. Thing in the Ice at three counters. Top two cards were both red. That probably is good for Collins. Probably like a Bolt and a Phoenix or something like that. But, you know, that thing in the ice is uh, potentially problematic for Corgan next turn. So he's going to have to hit a really good Faithless Looting here, I think, uh, in order to hit those Creeping Chills. It's like a library count there for Corgan. That's going to be relevant just thinking about how likely those Creeping Chills are to show up. Right. Now, Corgan still has the, uh, the Lightning Axe in hand. That was the one card he kept on the Conflagrate. So he can Dredge Loam. Uh, cast Loam, get back three, land for turn, flashback looting, or he can just uh, kill the thing in the ice and try to buy himself an extra turn that way. Collins keeps two cards on top here. He'll attack with the Arclight Phoenix. Corrigan down to 11, and we'll go back his way. Looks like it's going to be a pretty important dredge here. I mean, he's still got, what, three Stingweed Imps left on the deck. Uh, so he can dredge the first Imp, try to find a second. And then he can flashback looting if he finds one. And he, he can see up to 15 cards if he gets a little lucky on the Stinkweed Imp Dredges. And uh, if he has two or three, I think he has two Creeping Chills left in the deck. So that's two Creeping Chills out of roughly, uh, I would say, probably 25 cards. So the first five is one of 20. And then just tries to hit a Stinkweed Imp or a Creeping Chill. There he, is. he hits one and he hit a Creeping Chill as well. Collins down to three. Corrigan up to 14. He has Faith Looting in his graveyard. Wow, he can flashback Faith Looting, and he can still cast Lightning Axe, too. So this is actually, even if he misses, he's probably not dead. And he has a whole other turn with a whole other Faith Looting to go. So this is looking a lot better for Abe than I thought it did originally. And so there's one, one Imp in the graveyard. The card in hand that's not Lightning Axe is Imp. Kind of an incentive to Axe first, yeah. so that you know you have two Imps in the graveyard. I would 100% Axe first. That's going to take care of the thing in the ice and put the Imp in the graveyard. So you get 10 looks to find the last Creeping Chill in the deck to close the game and send it to a game three. And that's what or, or, uh, Corrigan will do. Now here's a flashback on the Faithless Looting. What do the Imps find? Dredge one, two, Gari Thug, three, land there Creeping Chill. Abe Corgan takes down game two. We got a game three, folks. This is playing for top eight here. So many points on the line. Abe Corgan, number two on the leaderboard. Austin Collins trying to break into the top 16 where he ends up with 
uh, a chance to make it all the way to the Players' Championship. Whew. So well played go. game from Abe Corrigan, for sure. To game number three here, and this is really just the power of these Faithless Looting decks. In that game too, Colin's Surgical Extracted two very important cards out of Corrigan's deck. Bloodcast and Narc Amoeba. Yeah, but he, the, so the first couple of Creeping Chills bought him a lot of time, right? And then the, after he got smushed, right? After, after a lot of his, his creatures got exiled via the Surgical Extractions, that just, uh, you know, bought him enough time, the, the first two Creeping Chills, to actually find the last two. And that big conflagrate, as well as Colin, uh, Colin's dealing himself a bunch of damage with the two Surgicals and a fetch land and yada yada. Uh, I mean, he was able to do Exaxes without even finding the second conflagrate. Yeah, the, the choice on that conflagrate, very sharp. Leaves that Arclight Phoenix on the table, goes for half your life total. Nice, comfortable number that's divisible by three. Really good navigation there. So for our third game, Austin Collins will be on the play, looking for a top eight here. Coming off a top eight last weekend, Austin Collins has just been so good on the tour here. Last year, he played 18 opens with three top eights. One thing that's missing there, though, is three consecutive invitational top four finishes. Yeah. Uh, Arguably one of the most impressive uh, feats ever performed on the SCG Tour. Three in a row, top four, all three invitationals. And uh, it's just, you know, at 16 years old, it's, it's unbelievable. He's 16. 16 years old. And he, was do and he was doing all that when he was 15 and yeah, 14, right? right? He's 16 now. Uh, last year on the SCG Tour alone, he played 18 Opens with only three top eights, but did have those three Invitational uh, top eights over the, the last 18 months or so. Uh, all time, just four Open top eights, but three Invitational top eights. No wins yet, but a bright future ahead for our young Austin Collins from Kansas City, Missouri. I would take three Invitational top fours over a, basically any kind of win. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I top four at an Invitational a while back. That, I think that may, might have been Austin's first top eight, uh, or top four in that string. Mm -hmm. And uh, we split for ten grand each. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a lot of money. Very good. If I, I don't... Yeah, okay. And that, don't, mean, that means Austin probably had around the same amount each time, right? Mm -hmm. if, when you were 16 years old, if you had, what, what would you do if you had 30 grand in the bank? I would soil myself. I would dunce and checks in. I would. I would. Panic. I would blank <laughs> check it, you know? We'd be I would bouncy have a castles. Hawaiian punch coming out of the drinking fountain. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Players underway here. Just to tap Steve Benz for Austin Collins on the first turn. Abe Corrigan will shock for a stomping ground. Here's a f stomping ground. Here's Faithless Looting. Some dredgers in the hand. Golgari Thug and a blood gas were discarded. All right, now for Collins, with leading with the Steve Vince means one of two things or both. It means he has a thing in the ice to play on two, and he wants to kind of save uh, some of his draw spells, or he has a surgical extraction and kind of a weaker hand. Now, uh, it could be disguising the strength of his hand by just playing that tap land, uh, but I have to imagine that he wants to apply some pressure here with that thing in the ice. Whether or not he has surgical extraction, though, is left to be determined. You will see Golgari Thug dredge for Corrigan. Another blood gas in the graveyard. See if he has something to do about this thing in the ice. And Collins is just going to stop in the draw step here. Surgical extraction on your blood gas. Collins to 18. Yeah, the surgical extraction here takes care of the blood gas, which uh, ultimately stripped Corrigan of a lot of his potential uh, dredgers over, or sorry, a lot of his potential threats over the next few turns. But uh, Lightning Axe at the ready for Corrigan means that he actually has a good answer to in the ice right now so not under a lot of pressure from Collins you know no Arclay Phoenix is in the graveyard yet and that thing in the ice is basically checked from the uh, uh, the lightning axe so. so we'll get a look at the hand two creeping chills a lightning axe that Golgari thug that was just dredged cathartic reunion and Narcomoeba and a bloodstained mire that's been white bordered that always makes me think it's sulfurous springs I actually thought it was sulfurous springs every single time I was actually looking at the deck list to see if there's a sulfurous springs so I'm not gonna lie <laughs> Why would you white border such a beautiful land from Onslaught? I see some players white border uh, things that are searchable. For I know that Matthias Hunt likes to white border his mountains in his Valakut deck, but oh, Fetchlands monstrous strategy. <laughs> Fetchlands are the opposite thing, though. They don't you don't okay. search for them, you know? Yeah, that's fair. And like there if, is that Bloodstained Mire, and here's Lightning Axe. I just need a good reason, you know. And you literally just destroyed a thirty dollars piece of cardboard. It's, good, it's done. You can't sell that. I mean, that's reason enough, isn't it? What, to destroy something beautiful? Yeah. yeah. 
Another thing in the ice for Austin Collins. He's going to recover from that lightning axe here. Yeah, and that is uh, probably the best follow-up to your first thing, guys, getting hit with a lightning axe is just play a second one. Uh, Corrigan, though, he's, his deck is running on all cylinders right now. Without the blood gas, though, uh, so prize amalgam a little bit harder to bring back, but it looks like he's going to go for a cathartic reunion on the following turn. Magic he's going to have a pretty explosive one if he hits an arc amoeba, but those creeping chills are starting to add up. Yeah, the one is hit there. That'll be triggered at Corrigan to 20, Collins to 15 here. <laughs> Cathartic Reunion discarding that Golgari Thug again. I got a little bit of good news and bad news uh, for, for Abe Corgan. The good news is he's casting a Cathartic Reunion and he had a dredger in the graveyard. The bad news is that he has two copies of Creepy Chill in hand. Not, not good. Not great. Finding Archimiba, though, brings back that prized amalgam. See how quickly Collins can transform thing in the ice. He did miss his third land drop, so might take something like a Mana Morphos, and the starting spell is going to be Serum Visions here for him. Yeah, if the starting spell is not Mana Morphos, they usually, and they don't have a third land on the previous turn, I cannot imagine that Austin Collins actually has the ability to transform thing in the ice this turn. But what I can tell you is that in his hand right now, He's got an Anger of the Gods, and if he can just find a third land, he can clean up this Prize Amalgam and this Nargamiba and leave Corgan with very few creatures left in his deck to find, let alone any pressure on the battlefield. Yeah, Anger of the Gods can really clean up against Dredd. You also <laughs> see Phoenix players boarded in the mirror. I remember the first time that happened to me. I was playing online. oof -da. My Phoenix opponent in the mirror gets hit for six, casts Anger of the Gods. I was fuming. I oh, was yeah. so angry. Oh, yeah. They were the gods, though, <laughs> not you. <laughs> All right, so here, Austin Collins got a tough scry, apparently. Uh, with Anger of the Gods in hand, it's possible that the top uh, involves no land but a Surgical Extraction or just some other card like Faithless Looting that's very good in his deck, especially if he has an Arclight Phoenix in hand. And he's just trying to figure out the uh, utility of uh, casting the, the Faithless Looting versus digging third land for the Anger of the Gods. So Collins will just pass. No additional cantrip, no third land drop. We'll see what Corrigan can do. Taking some natural draw steps. Not really ever where you want to be with Dredge. And it's another creeping chill. Oh, my. Uh, there was a, a, a Versus video I did a while back where uh, Dan May, one of our directors, made a little counter every time I naturally drew and hit a Narc Amoeba. <laughs> and right now, there'd be three dings on the screen. This is a tough one for Corgan, but I mean, not, out of the, not out of it yet. Three strikes is an out in baseball. Is it a game loss in Magic? Is Corgan still in this? Corgan is technically still in it. The Collins only having two lands means there's still a chance that he doesn't transform Thing Nice next turn. Uh, but here, here's the trick. He doesn't have life from the loam, so he's stuck on two lands. So that Faithless Looting in the Graveyard, not doing a whole lot. But he has another Cathartic Reunion. He's going to go for the Gusto. If this gets hit with a spell pierce, he's in some trouble. And he's taking a natural draw on the first one. That means he really wants to find a land. Hasn't found it yet. Drew not going to be, but that's another ding. That is way too many strikes. And he took another natural draw here, and I'm pretty sure he bricked again. Yeah, discarded two Golgari thugs, dredged none of them. Just draws three cards. Here's an attack. Narcomiba and prized Amalgam. Amalgam was blocked, I believe. Collins to 14. Now, he did draw... Uh, I don't know what just happened. That was really strange. Collins missed the land drop, played no spells, and passed back. Yeah, but in a deck where your average converted mana cost is like one. You think he's got a handful of phoenixes? Well, he just scried to the top on a, on a Serum Vision, so honestly, I have no idea. Unless that top card was just Surgical Extraction and his hand is just Bolts and Phoenixes, uh, I, I, I have no idea what's happening. So there, it's also a possibility he can just transform Thing in the Ice and wants to wait until like one more creature or two more creatures hit the battlefield. And uh, casting anything just puts him a little bit closer to transforming, and he doesn't have the flexibility to, to like cast Anger of the Gods on the turn he wants to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mana is definitely tight. Can say that much. Now, while Corrigan did miss a land drop last turn and the turn before, he did find a life from the loam off that Cathartic Reunion. So if he wants, he can dredge, get back some lands with that life from the loam, and start uh, pushing towards flashing back those Faithless Lootings. Yeah, so now in his draw step, he will dredge Golgari Thug, finds a Stinkweed Imp and another Faithless Looting. He'll attack with the Narcomiba and the prized Amalgam. Once again, the Amalgam will bounce off Thing in the Ice. Narcomiba knocks Collins a 13. And here's life from the loam. Copperline Gorge Mountain and Stomping Ground are the targets. I think I might have liked getting back uh, the City of Brass 
in case you draw uh, prize amalgams. But it's like a response here to that life from the loam. The three cards pulled out were just targets. It's going to be a lightning bolt on prize amalgam, thing on the ice to two counters. And ravenous trap. Ooh. Whoa. Thing on the ice to one counter. Whoa, baby. That, that ain't bad. Yeah, that's that's pretty nuts here. Corgan's going to lose those two faithless lootings. He's going to lose all of his dredgers and the lands that the life from the loam was targeting on top of that prize amalgam that just got hit with a lightning bolt. That's why you saw Austin pass the turn with no play. That's why uh, he scried to the top with no land and anger of the gods at the ready. And now Collins seems to be pretty firmly ahead. One spell would transform the thing in the ice, and then it won't take long to close from there. Finds his third land drop, Spire Bluff Canal, though Anchor of the Gods a bit weaker at this juncture. Any spell is pretty good, though. Looks like both players here some communicating uh, over something. It looked like a judge was asking him a question, but I think everything is, is up to par here. That three cards went into the graveyard. Oh, the life from the loam was on the stack, so the life from the loam gets left in there uh, because Collins wanted to keep him from finding that third land drop. Good All catch, right. good catch. Now we'll get back underway. Collins has tapped one land. That usually means Thing in the Ice is transforming. It's Lightning Bolt. That'll go upstairs as the Narcomeba will be picked up by the Awoken Horror. An attack for seven, plus that Lightning Bolt, Corgan down to ten. Yeah, and even if Collins has uh, like an Arclight Phoenix in hand, if he just draws another land, he can just hard cast it and attack for ten and force a chump block from Corgan, if he's able to even get a blocker on the battlefield. Corgan dredged life from the loam, found Conflagrate, Faithless Looting, prized Amalgam. Didn't find a land. Nope. That's the most important thing, because he has that Faithless Looting uh, in the graveyard, and he has a handful of non-lands and a life from the loam. And I'm pretty sure he can't cast anything except Conflagrate, and I'm, I, I'm not a math scientist, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have eight cards in hand. Looks like fewer than eight from here. Kind of need to actually resolve your life from the loam just to get above that threshold. Oh, yeah. yeah. That ravenous trap for Collins was huge. Oh, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why it's in the sideboard along with those surgical extractions to give you that big punch. Uh, that exiles the entire graveyard instead of just that precision. We saw in game two, Collins actually surgically extracted multiple things that pinpoint hate, and it just wasn't close to good enough, even with uh, a cast and a flashback. Here, though, Ravenous Trap knocking out the entire graveyard, including the prize amalgam that got hit, including all the lands that are getting targeted by Life from the Loam, and this might just be too much for Corgan to handle. He's going to think about what he wants to do here. Collins also at 13. That's a life total. It's hard to touch with uncastable creeping chills and a conflagrate for not enough. Yeah, the uh, the creeping chills here, the narc amoeba, all these rotting in hand, uh, just the the big ravenous trap. Everything's going wrong for Corrigan, and you can feel it. You can see it in his body language. He is not happy right now, and honestly, I don't blame him. I wouldn't be happy either. Cathartic Reunion discards two narc amoeba, three natural draws off that. There's a land. Yeah, it's too little, too late, as far as I'm concerned. Collins just needs a land to deal 10 damage with that Phoenix or another Lightning Bolt. Corgan down to three. Yeah, attack for seven, thing in the ice, so technically Corgan has another turn. Yeah, Corgan does have another turn, and uh, we'll see if he's able to get anything going here. He can cast a life from the loam. He can take a natural draw. Draws no warded foothills, so now he could cast Creeping Chill. I don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, it only puts him to six. Uh, five if he has to fetch. He's looking through his exile zone right now to see if he has a basic mountain left, I believe. I think he does. But even casting Creeping Chill here would only get him to uh, six life, and that Awoken Horror deals more damage. Now, could cast Stinkweed Imp. Could cast Stinkweed Imp. It's a blocker, and Austin Collins doesn't have Lightning Bolt, or else he would have killed Corgan already. And with only two cards in hand, there's a chance he can't transform the Awoken Horror just yet, which means that Corgan might have another turn. Yeah, so Corrigan <laughs> casts Stinkweed Amp. We'll go back to Austin Collins. It's Manamorphose, that second thing in the ice, down to three counters. Got some bad news for you. Land. The I mean, just casting Arclight Phoenix is enough here, and that's what he's going to do. Yeah, he had the option to cast Anger of the Gods or Arclight Phoenix. A packs it in. Collins is making his way into the top bay with a 12 2 and 1 record. Impressive performance from Izzet Phoenix and Austin Collins there. And he's making back to back open top eights here at SCG Philly. The Young Assassin. Uh, we got to come up with a better nickname for him. Yeah, that one.